Let's go back to some of the old school trucking days of the 1980s and the early 1990s when one of the coolest things that you could do with your truck was to put a great big sleeper on the back. Not only were these big sleepers more roomy and more comfortable, you could equip them with all sorts of nice options like a double bed or a shower or a small kitchenette and they were just ideal for husband and wife teams or drivers that were spending extended periods of time out on the road without going home. The 1980s sparked a number of custom builders for these super sleepers such as Double Eagle, Micmac and ARI. Not only did these sleepers provide more comfort for the drivers, they became almost a status symbol for owner operators that were making a lot of money and could afford to spend money on these sleepers and these sleepers were not cheap. Generally they started at about $20,000 and went to $40,000 or more and this is back in the 1980s. They were more than double the cost of a factory sleeper. Now these custom sleepers were big, beautiful, comfortable things, nice to look at, but they had their drawbacks and the first drawback was the weight. The first thing you had to do to have one of these custom built sleepers was to extend the frame rails. So you were adding weight just in lengthening the frame rails. Then on top of that, the custom sleeper itself was generally at least twice as much what a factory sleeper would weigh. And then on top of that, you were equipping the sleeper with the amenities that you want, such as a water tank for the kitchenette that you had or the shower that you had or a generator to power all the amenities inside. So the whole thing added an awful lot of weight to the tractor. Some of these tractors got up to 30,000 pounds or more just sitting there bobtail. So initially when these big bunk sleepers came onto the interstates, they would go to the shippers and receivers and the shippers would generally cut back the loads that they were going to ship to accommodate the extra weight of these big bunk trucks. But gradually after a time, the shippers realized that they were losing money. They were paying the same rate, but shipping less freight. So all of a sudden they would start turning away these big bunk trucks and just refusing them the loads. If they couldn't scale the 45,000 pound load, they just wouldn't load them. The second problem with these great big trucks was because you had extended the wheelbase, there was a loss of maneuverability and there were all sorts of docks now that these great big trucks couldn't get into, particularly on the eastern seaboard and especially after mandating the 53 foot trailers, the whole thing just became too long and too unmaneuverable in many cases. So the problem then became that these super sleeper trucks were only good for hauling light loads like romaine lettuce or cars or furniture or something like that. They were no good for hauling the really heavy stuff like steel. And because of that, these big bunk trucks lost a lot of freight. Now I had one myself back for a couple of years. I bought it secondhand from a Peterbilt dealership and I only bought it, I didn't buy it for the size of the bunk. I bought it because I had known the previous owner and I knew he had taken very good care of the truck. So that was the plus. That was why I bought the truck. But I didn't keep it very long because it was just too heavy and it became impractical for hauling produce. And half the time I hauled romaine lettuce, but the other half I was hauling carrots or something like that. The weight was just too big of a problem for me and I sold the truck. In 1998, Kenworth, recognizing the fact that a lot of drivers were after that extra room, those bigger bunks, but didn't necessarily want a whole lot more weight, came out with the Studio Sleeper in 1998 and it was a great compromise. It was a much bigger bunk but didn't add a whole lot more room and a lot of guys went that route because it was such a practical alternative to having one of these custom built super sleepers. By the time the 2000s rolled around, trucking had changed. Fuel efficiency was becoming more and more important and the 53 foot trailers were pretty much here to stay. So gradually as the 2000s progressed, you started to see the big super sleepers disappear. Now, some owner operators still run them. The guys at Reliable Carriers still run huge sleepers. The guys at Southern Pride still run huge sleepers. Super Trucker Dan, who I follow on YouTube, has kept his, but an awful lot of the guys have gotten rid of the sleepers in favor of smaller, lighter, more versatile, more maneuverable trucks. I see it as kind of a shame to see these great big sleepers disappearing because to me it indicates um, 
a step away or a loss of driver comfort in favor of the needs of the shippers. I don't necessarily think that's right, but these days, especially with the freight shortage the way it is, truck drivers need to be able to pick up just about any load they can find that comes their way. They can't afford to pick and choose because the load is too heavy. So in that way, the industry has almost phased out all these extra large super sleepers, and I think it's a shame. At the end of the day, I am sorry to see these huge custom sleepers disappearing from our interstates. To me, it indicates a loss of driver comfort. More and more guys have to spec really light trucks to be able to scale the loads, and in that instance, more driver comfort is sacrificed. These days when drivers, many drivers, need to be able to cook in the bunks and stay out for extended periods of time, this is a loss of space and room to be able to do that. But that is the way the industry is going. I don't like it, but that's the fact of the matter. Stay safe, keep the rubber side down, and I'll see you on the backhaul.